Welcome everyone to Caltech. Uh, my name is Oscar Painter. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm the uh, co-director of the Kavli Nanoscience Institute here at Caltech. Um, this is probably the third or fourth workshop with Oxford Instruments that I've been involved with. We've held this periodically over the last uh, nine or ten years. Um, this year we decided to change up the, the format and the topic a little bit. Um, we have talks that range from atomic layer etching to, um, uh, to growth of 2D materials. So the focus is more on nanotech as opposed to just etching, which is previously a subject of our uh, previous wo workshops. Um, I just wanted to add to the housekeeping um, that we're in the uh, Cahill building. Um, there's washrooms just around uh, the corner here. Um, Caltech campus is, is to the north of us uh, for those that are visiting uh, and want to stroll around during some of the breaks. Um, so across the street here, you'll, you'll get into the main part of the Caltech campus. Um, we'll be having coffee breaks and uh, lunch on the patio out back <coughs> here. So again, around the corner, um, the patio of the Cahill building. Um, so, well, I'd just like to again reiterate, welcome to everyone. Um, we'll have, uh, I think, a lot of time to discuss things. Our breaks are relatively long. Um, so I hope everyone uh, enjoys the, the workshop and, and uh, I hope there's a lot of uh, you know, fruitful discussions that emerge. So with that, I'll I guess pass it back. Thank you very much. Thanks for your welcome. Uh, the other thing you may have spotted a notice on the way in. No, you wouldn't. No, you didn't see the notice because you didn't even see the notice about beverages. So the other notice you didn't see was the one that said this is being recorded. Um, the slides are being recorded and audio is being recorded. So if we get into a Q&A, uh, could you wait for a microphone? Uh, and then, then you'll be audible for those people who care to participate offline later. And yes, you're being recorded, so think what you say. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, Robert Gunn to um, give a few introduction slides to Oxford Instruments um, because Look, it's a company seminar. This is the corporate bit. Just go with it. Okay. Enjoy. So you can be, you know, uh, can you hear me? You can fall asleep for the next 10 minutes because this is the corporate bit, not the interesting sciencey bit. Um, Oxford Instruments has been around for 50 plus years now. It really did start out of Oxford University um, by Martin Woods. It spun out of there. It was the first commercial business to spin out of Oxford, um, really looking at um, superconducting wire. And I'll come back to that in a little bit, because sadly, we do no, no longer own the business that makes superconducting wire. We are very much seen as an in innovator of, for science and uh, world-class products, from Asylum doing AFMs to Andor, who do very high-speed cameras, through to plasma technology, where we hopefully will talk today around pushing the forefront of nanotechnology in ALE and ALD. I assume you have a similar thing in, uh, in uh, the US, but we've had 13 Queen's Awards for Innovation, which is a recognition by the UK government. It gets, pardon? <laughs> so a Queen's Award for Innovation. So we, we, uh, we have um, won that on 13 occasions. Um, we have seen revenue increase by over 250% since 2006. Our share price, last time I looked, was about £10, so it's about actually about five times what it actually was when I first joined the business way back in 2008. We invest a hell of a lot into R&D. That's where um, there's a few people here you will hear talk today are actually employed and where we want to work. And 30% of our tools and systems, we actually, uh, our, our processes that we've done are actually things we've developed in the last three to five years. So that's really showing that we're always pushing the science and pushing the, uh, the boundaries moving forward. A quick history. As I said, we were founded way back in 1959 uh, uh, by uh, Sir Martin Woods. He's still active, actually. He's, he's still seen in the business every now and then. We're, the first thing was superconducting magnets and then the first uh, MRI. Floated on the stock market in the 1980s. And, I think, well, um, and the group expands to get global presence by moving into Japan, etc. 
We have a very big development program. That's a, it's a cryostat. And I think that's a sign at the end there. We divided into three product companies just as uh, to try and uh, more give a more of a story to the actual to the stock market than it is to actually for internal internal. But we live in the nanotechnology tools, um, which involves asylum, etc. There's an industrial products division that actually looks at doing handheld uh, detectors. This slide will probably get changed very soon because we have sold that business to Atachi High Tech, so we'll be changing these slides very soon. And then we have a service business that looks after MRI scanners. We try to provide solutions for fundamental physics and materials research, which is a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, and applied physics, and trying to uh, apply that to actual production applications for MEMS, optoelectronics, spin electronics, and, and, and QIP. We love to partner with customers. Hey, this is the reason we're here. We like partnering. We like doing sem seminars. We really work very well. We collaborate with a lot of our customers and try and work with them through to actually be giving them solutions for the markets that they're in. A little bit about plasma technology, which is the division that is really presenting today. Sorry, Asylum, the majority of today. We were established in 1982. We currently run about, I think that's probably a little bit short actually now, about 360, between 360 and 400 employees worldwide. We have offices in Europe. We are based in Europe. We're based in a very small little town south of uh, a place called Bristol in Yatton. It's a very beautiful place. If you fly to Bristol Airport, you're 10 miles within us, so please come and visit. We have a base in Asia. We have a collaboration with a um, science uh, university, ITRI, where we have a lab and we actually uh, have, a, have a few tools for doing work process development out in Asia and doing work out in Asia. And in the US, we collaborate through various different places like here, LBNL. We have all our ISO accreditations. We offer, probably uh, for most businesses, a wide range of technologies from ALD, ALE, ICPH, ICPCVD, PCVD, IMB. I don't think, I think I probably missed some out there, but we do offer a wide range of technologies. We offer, actually, when Oscar said about we've been doing this for several years, Actually, I came up with that the first time, the 6,000 recipes. I came up with that figure when we first did this presentation about seven or eight years ago here in uh, Caltech, soon after I joined the business. So that's probably somewhere near 7,000 now, processed recipes that we can probably offer. Very strong in compound semi and micro and nano applications, silicon front end and silicon back end processes. I'll go through this very quickly. Oops. Didn't want to go that fast. <laughs> that, was, that was quick, wasn't it? Yeah. We go from anything from an open low tool. Um, this is a very good model, because yes, that's me. Um, um, from an AT, which was one of the first tools that Oxford Instruments ever, ever bought. If you, sometimes you wander around these labs and you see an orange machine that's got Oxford Instruments name on it or Plasma Technologies name on it. And it's basically the same process chamber from those days. It's just that we've made the controls better, made it a, a lot more uh, simple to use. It's got more um, diagnostics on it. And it um, we can do up to about uh, an 8 inch wafer in RIE mode and PCV node mode in that tool. We evolved up through that and added load locks um, to make the tools. Also added ICP capability. And we've evolved through that into cassette cassette production type tools as well. So we can offer them in various different guises, hexes and, and squares. So the business has evolved over the years, but we still offer every single part of that technology to our customer base. I'll again just do this. I don't intend to go through all these. You can, because you know, some of these will get talked about to today. Hannah will talk about PCVD and ICPCVD. I will do some work around nanofab on 2D materials. Mike will talk around RIE and ICP etching and the, all the other people here will be talking around in this space. So literally, um, you can see we've got a very large process space. Plasma Pro is our latest um, product, which is a very small and uh, it's, an, it's an evolution of the tools you actually see if you went down to the labs down in Oscar's lab. 
you will, so there's an evolution of those, those tools to just uh, actually just trying to make them a little bit more compact and keep the electronics uh, off board. We will do up to a 200 mil wafer depending on the configuration of the tool you actually uh, buy. We have an advanced software control of the arm so we can um, accelerate it, decelerate it, keep it very safe. So, you know, it's, it's a very sophisticated tool, is the, uh, the, the ICP. We do a Brooks. I shall just pass over these. These technologies will get talked about during the day, so I'm not going to um, go through them very quickly. It's just an enhancement of um, the tools that we do. I will talk about ALD, because we do ALD of 2D materials. So I'll talk about that a little bit. Pauline, unfortunately, doesn't have a talk here, which was about iron beam, but we can if you wish. If you're interested in what iron beam technology is, one of our iron beam technologists is here. Please ask me questions if you're going through, if I'm going through this too fast. I'm just trying to give you an overview of the product range we do. We have a global support network. Craig is part of that. He's based out here in, um, in the US. He's our applications guy out here on the, on the West Coast supported by a service, a service team. Dimitri's out here as our sales manager for the West Coast. So, you know, we have a very big support network. We see that as being a very, very important for our customer base to actually be able to access that on a, on a very timely basis. Nanotechnology tools. Again, I think we're going over the same ground again. So I've, hopefully I've given you a little bit of a flavor where we are and what our business we are. And you can go and look on our website. If you've got any questions, I quite happily take them. Go on, Oscar. I was wondering, what are the, what are the big areas of lucrativeness for operators in this place? I mean, what are the emerging ones that you, you guys see over the next you know, five, ten years? I'll give Mike perhaps answer that one as well. But I, I see specifically from the conference we just went to, which is ALE and ALD up in, up in Denver, um, ALE was very, very well supported, I thought. Looks a very exciting technology, something going forward. Um, ALD, it's developing. There's lots of new different materials coming up, which will partly cover where we're going to be discussing. I think there's lots of things in Opto coming out, the new, new stuff. Um, areas that will be also of interest is like 5G technology, quantum. Things we were, always, we're starting to think about and look at, uh, you know, because there's obviously diamond processing in quantum. Where, where does that go? How do you make the MV centers work? Well. There's lots of exciting things coming up. I think probably too many, but, but we would see 5G, uh, power, areas like that where obviously new novel materials like silicon carbide are coming in to actually be used as well as some areas that we need to be, to be looking at. So for 5G, is that like the detection of these electrics and the deposition of the these electric materials in silicon? Or what, are the, what are the processes that are interesting? Well, there's, there's, there's obviously for uh, filters to be uh, silicon etching because there's lots of uh, silicon filters in those and piezo materials around filters. Uh, silicon carbide itself needs processes because you need to feature etch and also for power you need the via at the back which needs to be a very important one. So there's lots of different areas that we're looking at and, and working on. Mike, I'll, I don't know if I've left anything for you. Well, we've got a Q&A session at the end of the day and we might do well to start that session by returning to that question because in uh, a research and industrial community we all actually want to do the same thing. We want to do something relevant that um, pushes our art forward, gets us known, makes us money. You know, that's the, uh, the, the, the dynamic is rather similar. We all want to do something relevant uh, to our world uh, because it's more likely that we'll, we'll have fun and get, get chocolate. Okay, thank you, Rob, for the introduction. Um, we're going to have a couple of technical talks before we unleash yet more caffeine on you. Um, so, um, Max Jones, you're here? Yeah, good. Uh, the intriguing title of Silicon Vacuum Tubes. Now, I, I was a university.